right, guys. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to the Robert Show. Can't wait to invite my guest Ben Podravsky uh, as my guest on the Robert Show today. Ben is uh, the lead of uh, software development at Mail and Deploy. He's also a uh, and software developer developer consultant. He uses uh, Click as his go-to. Uh, obviously, the uh, tool. So we'll be talking a lot around it. He also completed his education in the Aviation Academy, Austria. Today we will discuss about his journey, about uh, mail and deploy, about click and much more. So feel free to have your questions in and also good news for you guys. We'll be giving away one annual subscription of 365 Data Science. So first thing, let us know where you're joining from and uh, don't forget to put a hashtag 365 data science in the comment section. Keep them coming uh, because what we'll be doing is by end of the show, we will be announcing the winners. So looking forward to it. We'll be just announcing one winner. So uh, don't forget to put in that. And uh, without any further ado, I'm super excited. Uh, let's welcome Bert. Hey, Bert. Uh, welcome. Hey. welcome to the Robert Show. It is such a pleasure yeah. to have you here today. Great to be here. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, so I was just letting folks know about uh, you being a software developer, consultant, and uh, your go-to tool is Click, as we were talking uh, backstage. So we'll be learning a lot around that. Uh, can't wait to obviously learn more about your journey to how you started and uh, how you, you know, uh, come long way. Uh, but to start with, obviously, for our audience, why not uh, introduce yourself? Sure, thanks. So, yeah, my name is Bernd, I'm 37. I live in Vienna, Austria. Um, I, yeah, I'm, as you said, I'm a software developer. You mentioned my, my graduation, which was actually not um, associated with software development at all. It's uh, the Aviation Academy Austria is a, a flight school. So my kind of private uh, hobby is, is aviation. Um, and I do flight instruction and ground instruction there for future airline pilots. Um, regarding software development, I graduated from a, I would say like a technical college, a five-year college um, here in, in Austria back in 2003, got involved into several software projects, uh, done lots of stuff like um, ERP systems, CRM systems, um, many, um, aviation related software projects until in 2012 I came into touch with Click um, as a business intelligence tool and that's where the whole journey with Mail and Deploy basically started um, yeah wow that's long time uh, fantastic great journey of, uh, and thanks for sharing that we have a few folks who have joined us we have Aditi who is saying hey hey Aditi thanks for joining in uh also we have uh bakari hello bakari from Hi. kenya which is fantastic looking forward to this session thanks bakari for joining us um okay uh bent obviously my next question is about uh straight i'm i'm obviously diving in straight uh, into what are the top skills that a data leader should have according to you what do you feel so i have to, i have to say uh that um, I'm not a data leader myself, uh, nor nor am I actually really in data science. So what I my role is actually um, to be the provider of a tool that data leaders and companies um, uh, use to do their uh, data science stuff. So my point of view may be different from from um, other guys, of course, and from from um, uh, people who are actually data leader them data leaders themselves. Um, from my experience, I would say, um, and this might be, I mean, I hope this, it's not a very exotic answer, but uh, in all the projects that I've done so far, for me, actually communication skills, um, I would rank absolute on the, uh, on the top of the list. Um, wow. The reason, the reason being that, um, the, so as a data leader, I think you have, you were, one of your main um, things you need to do is to 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 manage the process of how you can work with data in your in your company. Who needs uh, data or um, reports from your data? Who collects data? Who provides the ETL process and that kind of stuff? So, 
as a data leader, obviously you should have knowledge about data structures, the data itself, about tech skills, you know, the tool sets that are being used. Um, but at the end of the day, I think as a data leader, you have to put all the dots together. You know, you have to understand the business requirements because data in and of itself doesn't help you. You have to bring data to the people who need it in exactly the form that they need it. And that requires more than just the technical understanding of, of the process. Um, and I would say that um, having communication skills to understand business requirements as well as technical aspects of, of the whole process as probably with any project management is, is uh, one of the key skills, I would say, yes. Okay, that's uh, that's a great answer, and definitely communication does make a lot of sense there, uh, Ben. Because what I feel is uh, we always talk about the uh, the skill set, but uh, no one's talking a lot around the uh, you know the the actual skill set, which is communication, and it's one of the most important soft skills, I would say. So it is definitely a great uh, a top skill one uh, data leader should have. So yeah, thanks for that question. And also, one yeah. thing that I could could add, if if it's okay, um, because my experience uh, with that is, I mean, I've seen projects struggle or even fail, not because they didn't have the correct data, not because they didn't have didn't have the correct tools. So everything was in place from a technical perspective, but they simply failed because they couldn't communicate okay what do we do with that data how in which form do we need it um and and that's a bit sad you know if you have everything in place and it's just a matter of of understanding what is our business case here what what is where should we be at the end of the day um that's kind of a yeah mm. uh, so that's a lot an experience that i've i've um, had a lot yeah yeah i i totally agree because it's more about conveying about your project and uh putting the you know obviously sending out the right message in terms of the data as well if if you are a great yeah. storyteller uh, data storyteller obviously it kind of uh makes a lot of difference uh and it gives you that obviously that upper uh you know i would say a, a good ground where you can say that okay i did communicate it well it i was a, a great storyteller as well and it did my project was actually accepted so uh, i totally agree data storytelling is a, is a good keyword here data storytelling in is actually 90 percent communication because sure. uh, when you do data storytelling um it's not only about having the correct data it's also about understanding <clears throat> how it how will my data storytelling be understood by those people who will actually use it and if they don't understand it in the right way then all your work was <laughs> um yeah not pull in the in, in in the right direction i would say yeah yeah you just need to actually pull the right strings in uh definitely it does make a difference then but uh i have a actual uh you know a, a follow-up question sort of uh when we talk about the top skill uh, obviously there it also comes up uh, we also talk about the data strategy so what is that one thing that a data strategy should include according to you so obviously, since I come from from a, a reporting point of view, I think um, what I would say here is don't forget. So with all these new fancy tools that are out there, you know, you can dive into data, you can analyze your data, you can um, basically uh, review your company's performance in every detail, even when you are on vacation on the beach with your iPad, because everything is so modern tech driven right now. Um, but despite all this, I would say, don't, don't forget about, um, don't forget about those people in your company or even outside your company who still want to get traditional PDF files because they may be overwhelmed by the possibilities that you have in modern data tools, you know, and they are still fine or they're, they're doing their job better if they get what they need instead of having to adapt to maybe new tools that, that they are not um, happy to work with. So do not forget, forget about the, um, the financial guy in your company that still loves to take an Excel file and play around with it and produces great results. Do not forget about um, even, so one thing for instance is 
data strategy is not only an internal process within your company. So uh, where you have, you know, your ERP data source, you have your CRM data source, you have, you may have other, um, other data structure structures you need to combine. Um, don't forget about people outside of your company. So for instance, uh, suppliers or customers who you, who you want, maybe want to give a monthly report or an overview uh, about what they bought, what they supplied, which conditions have applied to those things. So data strategy should not be an internal only process. It, it should be, um, it should consider external um, um, Major. organizations or entities as well, I would say. 100% agreed uh, by Brent there, because uh, it's not only about uh, just having that strategy inside but outside as well and you need to have a two-way thinking when you talk about data strategy because it's more about solving the problem for the customers and if you can do that uh, with great strategy nothing like it i think you your organization might uh, be on a great run so yeah sounds good i think uh, and also for those who are attending uh, uh, just a just to let you guys know, uh, Bent is here uh, and we'll be answering all the questions around mail, uh, mail and deploy, uh, business intelligence and automated reporting. So feel free to have your questions coming in. Uh, I see obviously uh, Bakari saying that data storytelling is is a huge part of communication. Yeah. And definitely that, uh, that yeah, is very Totally important. agree. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, obviously moving forward, uh, uh, moving ahead, Bent, I wanted to know since you are a software developer, what is the most challenging thing according to you being a software developer? I know it's a very... There's, you there's might lots have... of things. <laughs> <laughs> How much time have you got? No. Um, yep. So I would say uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting question because I think even, I'm, I mean, I'm 37, so I'm not very old, but I may sound old by saying that. When I started developing, um, everything was a, was much more peaceful, if that if that's the right word. So nowadays, there's new technologies coming around the corner every day. There's new frameworks. There's new um, devices. You know, everything needs to be multi-device device now. It has to work on your iPhone. It has to work on your Android phone. It has to work in the cloud. It has to work on-premise. Um, and there's, for me, the most... Um, the most difficult part is often to not fall into the trap of having to to jump or having to to automatically use every new technology that comes around the corner. So it's it's very often it's okay to say, hey, that's a fancy new technology. It looks great. It sounds great. But let's review it in the context of our business case. Does it actually help us? Is it stable enough? Is it because Unfortunately, um, as fast as new technology and new frameworks come along, mm -hmm. they also get out of support pretty quickly because sometimes they um, they are not widely used or they're not maintained right. um, very long. And in order to have a stable long-term development strategy, I think uh, you need to uh, you need to learn to say new. Uh, sorry, you need you need to learn to say no to new technologies, even though you think they're fancy and they're great, but yeah. um, they just don't fit your your business case in your uh, context. Wow, this is very interesting because uh, you know every time I hear about uh, a software developer talking about different things, it, it's more around the new things that are coming up. But uh, at the same time, you've given a very important perspective in terms of uh, coming from a company or a brand. If if, if there are too many updates, uh, it might not work as well. It's not only stability. That, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's always not not a, not always about having that uh, you know hunger for upgrading because sometimes it might not just work and things might just go haywire. So yeah, it does make a lot of sense. Uh, we have another method here saying very nice, very wise suggestion about jumping into new technology. Thanks, so, <laughs> I agree. Amazing. But but to, just to clear, I mean, that's not yeah. to say that I'm I'm I'm, I'm I, we are not using new technology. It's just that we are, that we in our company have um, implemented kind of a reflection process in all this. So if you come across a new technology, don't say no immediately, but don't say yes, because it's fancy, reflect on it, discuss it and think about, okay, 
could it affect our stability in a negative way? We have a stable product working. Why why making it shaky just because, um, you know, uh, it, it, you have a new feature that probably nobody will ever use. It just <laughs> looks fancy in a marketing video. You know what I mean? So that's... Um, yeah. And that was different when, like, in 2000 or whenever I did my first projects where you had three frameworks to pick from and you yeah. you you were you could be absolutely sure if you i don't know go for microsoft c plus yeah. plus that will be i mean that's still supported nowadays you know so yeah, exactly uh, and that's yeah it's not something you know which has actually gone out of uh the uh, you know uh, out of the trend as well till date people do use c plus plus it's one of the most important frameworks so uh, and they do it for a reason they do it for a reason that it's that they because it works it's stable it yeah Exactly. So uh, that also brings me to a very quick question about, uh, you know, about the traditional things uh, when you obviously started uh, uh, with being a software developer back then and till now, how have things actually changed? What what do you think in terms of the technology which has changed? Obviously, there are many upgrades which might have happened. And uh, how do you feel, you know, the change? Is it good or is well, or, or maybe, you know, you are slightly on the other side where there were less options and it was much smoother. How does, and also it it's, might put you under pressure too. To no, 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 I'm, no. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. It's hard to tell whether it's good or bad because good or bad, that's always, you know, depends on the context. It depends on, I mean, you, you might as well ask the question, is it good to buy a new iPhone every year for 1300 <laughs> bucks? Good question. I mean, if you strictly speak about, hey, I need a smartphone where I can check my email and make phone calls, then obviously you would say it's not good. But uh, there might be other cases where you say it is. I think what what has what, what has most changed, in my opinion, is that um, it, it's similar to what I said before uh, when I started developing the first. So I was uh, I started actually in ERP and CRM um, software development. And the the, techno the the technology question, so which framework shall we use, um, which design pattern or whatever um, uh, would fit our project, that was heavily discussed at the beginning of the project. But once you've decided it, all the focus was being put to, okay, now we have decided about the technology and the framework, let's solve the problems now that because let's do what the software sh um, or let's develop what the software should should actually do and nowadays right. maybe because it, it's more fast paced those technology questions might come up right in the middle of a project because uh, a new device an ios update is coming from apple uh, and it breaks compatibility um, windows 11 is coming along and changes uh, some api so some low and even high level apis so it's a much more dynamic process. It's not as strictly structured as it was where you had, okay, development choice or in framework choice, and then this, uh, create use cases and, and write the software. It's a much more back and forth thing. It's it's more of a development yeah. cycle. Yeah. hundred percent. I think it's the evolution which has happened and you need to actually run, uh, you yeah. know, uh, with the things evolving. And that's how uh, it's the nature, <laughs> actually. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, um, uh, uh, obviously I have a few questions for you, but before I take that, uh, I see a, a few interesting questions in the audience. So let's pick them up. Sure. One is from Abhishek Srivastav. Being a marketing and communication professional, uh, is it advisable to learn these new BI tools? Actually, I'm planning to go for a career transition, not immediately, but in the years to come. Kindly advise. Interesting. That's a very good. That's a very good question. Um, I would say since since I rank communication skills very high, not only when it comes to BI, but also any type of management, uh, whether you're a data leader, a project manager, or a CEO. CEO. So I, I, I'm kind of a communication skill nerd here, and I think um, being a marketing and communication professional maybe. Um, says something about you you have the communication tool set that can bring something very new and interesting to to uh bi so maybe you will you will even have a, a great career because you might provide something to the project that um you know you you 
you have a lot of BI projects where you have tech nerds in there, so they 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 can write complicated SQL uh, statements in like even when you wake them up at two in the morning. Right. But and if if you if you can bring the communication skill into the whole process, then that's actually something that I, uh, I mean, I, of course, I cannot be a career advisor here, but I think it's definitely something you should you should look into. Absolutely. Um, and it's a growing it's a growing um, market, so. Um, lots of opportunities there, I would say. Amazing. That's definitely a great answer for Abhishek. Uh, thanks for this question, Abhishek. Okay, moving on. Another uh, interesting question from Bakari. Uh, how do you make a choice on the best visualization tool to use? <laughs> you can be biased, Ben. Definitely. Uh, so actually, I, I I don't know if if Bakari can can um, provide a bit clarity here. Does does he mean the question in terms of, of software development in general? So like, what will it, what is my UI framework for software development? Or is the question targeted more to uh, which BI tool, basically, uh, which dashboard uh, creation tool um, yeah. he wants I, to know? I, I, don't... Think, I think he's more on the side where he, uh, obviously, he's looking out for a tool, which, which, which is the So it's BI related in that yeah. case. OK. So uh, I, I am biased here because we we work with Click um, yes. for I don't know it feels like uh, since the Stone Age, so we <laughs> we we've been with Click from the from the from the start basically uh, starting with Click View and then now um, obviously Click Sense and uh, all the Click Sense Cloud uh, products that they are or that they have introduced already. And I love Click, so of course everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Um, I feel Click is just has the best combination of um, the right the right tool for the right um, for the right business case. Great visualizations. It's extensible, so you can have your own extensions, your own visualizations, your own um, uh, data presentation layer if you want. Um, and obviously, it works great with mail and deploy. So you will get um, great reporting from Click. Um, yeah. What else can you want? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, makes uh, a lot of sense, and that definitely answers for Bakari. If it was something else, Bakari, please uh, let us know. Uh, we have Ben will be happy to answer definitely. But yeah. moving on, um, uh, just wanted to give a quick reminder to our audience that we are giving away one annual subscription uh, for those who are mentioning uh, hashtag 365 data science in the comment section. We already have 18 entries and we'll be uh, announcing the winner by end of uh, towards the end of the show. So feel free to put in a hashtag 365 data science. Uh, okay, coming back, Ben, obviously, I wanted uh, since we are talking about click. Uh, wanted to learn how did you get into reporting for Click? How did that happen? So it actually happened by accident. So I joined a company in wow. 2012 that was a consulting company, um, uh, a Vienna-based consulting company. With uh, they were using Click Click View back then, and um, something related to what I said before was that. People loved the, the 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 BI tool. They loved being able to you know analyze data, to filter, to dynamically associate data, um, and that kind of stuff. And then the question came up: Okay, that's all great. That's cool for power users and for key users. Um, what if I want to send my CEO a PDF every Monday that contains you know just the the most important KPIs? Because you know the CEO is busy. He doesn't want to dive into all the details of data analysis all the time. He wants to know, you know, the key figures, how is it going? And um, we actually started to think about that, that business case and decided to develop a tool for that, uh, which was called QV reports back then. And it's now called um, mail and deploy since we made a relaunch more or less a few years ago. Amazing. And then everything, you know, just it grows. It, we, we we had a few customers at first, which were our consulting um, uh, customers for Click, and they used mm -hmm. the product. And then new customers were coming along, and they provided feedback. And they said, you know, as it is, they say, well, it's great, but it would be greater if it could 
do this one more thing and we were like okay well then let's do <laughs> then let's do it and that's how it basically grew and uh, wow. we're in version three now and uh, yeah pretty happy with with um, what we have I think definitely that's an interesting, uh, you know, uh, upscale, I would say a great scale uh, to a level where you have uh, amazing clients and obviously you have, uh, you know, obviously done things and you have catered your clients according to their needs, which is very yeah. important in such business. So 100% uh, great work for, to you guys, uh, to the whole mail and deploy family. Okay, uh, moving on, there's an interesting question from Manisha that I would like to pick, which is, why is Click used only for reporting? Is it only used for reporting? No, no, no. Okay, maybe yeah. that was a misunderstanding. So Click yeah. uh, Click as a product or as a family of products actually is a business intelligence tool. So it provides mm -hmm. functionality to, um, to uh, you know, load data from different data sources. They have great connect connectivity. You can uh, connect to your SQL Server, Oracle, web services, uh, your SAP um, um, instance, your your Excel files, CSV files. So it's it's great for actually for the whole ETL process. So you can have different data sources, and you can use Click to basically. Um, load that data into a single kind of a data warehouse thing, relate okay. data with each other, transform data and, and so on. And that is then used to, and you can then use that data to build dashboards. So these are fully interactive dashboards where you can perform drill downs. You have your pie charts, pivot tables, you know, everything um, you can imagine. Um, and then you can start your dynamic uh, data process uh, or data analysis. So, and made in deploy, which is our tool, is basically an add-on to to that um, to that infrastructure. Where, in addition to having Click as a BI tool, mm -hmm. um, you can use your existing dashboards in Click Sense and create PDF files, export data to Excel. You can create PowerPoint uh, slides from it which obviously has the advantage that if you had to if you had to set up a, a second reporting process uh -huh. then obviously you would do a lot of things twice because you would first have to understand your data and transform your data in click for UPI but when setting up a reporting process you, mm -hmm. you have a you know a sec a second project where you have to think about your data and bring it into a form that can be understood by the reporting tool and we try to circumnavigate that problem by saying okay hey you spend so much time um setting up your data warehouse in click you have all your dashboards there everything you, you have double checked all the uh, your measures your calculations don't do it twice use the okay. same use the same uh, data source for your reporting as well okay that's a great answer and a great explanation <laughs> that uh, it is not just uh, a reporting uh, tool. Yeah. Uh, so thanks for this question and thanks for the clarification. Uh, let's take a quick question from uh, Abhishek Shivasta. There's a follow up question about uh, the guy who just came up with the marketing communication. So his question is, how tough is it to go for a BI profession transition when you have a CV which is more than a decade into Marcom's experience? Uh, I'm finding it challenging while interacting with the industry people. Yours. Okay. Okay. G uh, interesting question, of course, would be yeah. why exactly does he find it challenging? Is it because they are using terminology or or um, they're talking about tools without explaining what, what that actually is? Because, of course, as in every as in every um, part, there are lots of magic words which which are being used. Um, and if oh. you don't, you know, um, I would say uh, it, it, it totally depends on, on, on your tech skills as well. Um, but there are lots of tutorial videos, especially for Click. I mean, there, there, there will be for other tools as well. Um, there's even a possibility to set up a Click account um, for free for 30 days. Then just go to YouTube, Google, you know, I don't know, click, uh, click business um, or click BI tutorial. Yeah. And you can even start with just some Excel files that you may have or even create some fake uh, uh, um, Excel files and start you or start your journey by doing that. And I think that will that could be a good 
Yeah, um, definitely. I think self. in terms, I, I uh, you just rightly mentioned that YouTube uh, and Click as well. They offer a uh, free membership in terms of obviously that's a limited time membership, and uh, they also have uh, now started some initiatives where they help the beginners. So uh, they always do some or the other thing on their website. So it's great for you to you know just have a look at those, Abhishek. And uh, if there's anything more, uh, feel free to reach out to any of us, and we'll be happy to help. But uh, hope that helps you, Abhishek. Uh, also, another question uh, which is around for a com uh, company by Sed. Sed is asking what are the steps to implement company BI analytics from ground up. Wow, that's a <laughs> that's a <laughs> tough question to answer into into um, into sentences. Uh, it's probably uh, the the quick answer I can get is um, make a business case first. Uh, understand why do you want to set up BI analytics? Who needs uh, BI in your company and what for? Um, setting up BI analytics just so that you have BI analytics doesn't make any sense. You need to understand what data do I have? What data sources do I have? What um, what do my, you know, either external entities or internal entities actually need? And then make your decision which which um, which tools you're going to need for that uh, and, and go on from there. All the other steps, you know, are which ETL process you 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 need, which data warehouse. That's probably too too much to to all mention it here in in one answer. But um, start by understanding your business case. I mean, that's a good advice probably for any decision that you yeah. that you make. Very true, and that definitely answers for said. Thanks for that question, said. Okay, uh, moving on. I had a question around uh, what are the recent developments in the Click universe and how does this affect mail and deploy? I wanted to learn more about it. Sure. So um, as with probably any um, uh, uh, part in IT, um, going into the cloud is the big, is the big, um, um, is the big topic or or uh, the, the title of all this? So click click they they used to provide tools for um, for on premise in installation. So you had your your I don't know reporting or BI server in house. Um, you would connect it to to your data sources and then start your your data analysis and dashboard building. Um, Click has now focused a lot on moving companies to the cloud. So they provide a cloud service, um, which is also what I'm going to show you uh, in, in the live demo in a minute. Yeah. Um, and of course, the challenges for us were uh, to, since since our tool only makes sense with, in the context of the Click universe, we had to adapt to that change. So in addition to supporting Click on-premise uh, solutions, we also needed to make the move to the cloud and the short or the short uh, answer is we made mail and deploy cloud compatible so you can install mail and deploy on premise in a hybrid cloud or in a public cloud um, you can connect to clicksense whether it is on premise in the public cloud or even only installed on a local laptop you don't even need a, a complicated it environment and that were the basic basically the challenges that we that we that we had in the last one to two years, and which are still, of course, um, um, the, the, the development is still going on. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, definitely we would love to see uh, a demo around it. In uh, how does it look? I'm sure the audience would love a demo coming from you. And uh, so, if if you don't mind, why not go for a demo and uh, show us something? And sure, you can actually play around. So I know there are a few questions. Uh, uh, there's a question from Bakari he said that we'll be taking those questions definitely after the demo, and it might happen that you might actually answer it through the demo too. So let's do mm -hmm. this. Okay. So let me quickly yeah. uh, go here and share. Uh, and I hope you, Yeah. so you can, can see my screen now, I hope. Okay, perfect. Yes. Okay, so um, with the limited time I have, I, I, I will try to keep it as tight as possible. Um, so let's start with, with um, the actual click uh, environment. So what you can see here on the screen now is 
me being connected using my my standard web browser to our internal um, Click business account, which is basically the the one of the cloud solutions that that Click provides. And what you can see here is just a very small um, uh, demo dashboard that I've put together. So I do have a pie chart uh, down here. It's all based on fake sales data. So um, um, I was just playing around with, with Excel in this case, loaded the data into Click. I have a pivot table here, you know, that, that provides some uh, analysis based on on uh, data that I have structured um, in several regions, Asia, Europe, North America, uh, based on the year. And then I just have some some measures here, like the revenue and and uh, sold units. Now, as when you when you're working with this um, uh, um, dashboard here in Click, obviously you have the possibility to you know, do some filtering so I could filter to Europe, for instance, um, and everything on my dashboard will be filtered to Europe. I can filter to, let's say, software here, which will filter everything uh, to only software revenue and sold units and that kind of stuff. So that's how you do your interactive um, drill down and analysis from within Click. Um, now, switching to mail and deploy, the challenge is how can I use these tables or de these visualizations in a simple PDF report or even in a more complex PDF report? I mean, we can do reports up to 200, 300 pages as well. And how that basically works so that without uh, making it too technical. So the first thing that you need with from within ClickSense is you need to generate an API key because you need to generate the API key because mail and deploy talks to ClickSense using an API. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a, a uh, an API key, mail and deploy demo. And having that key here, I can actually copy it. And when I now move to mail and deploy, so this is the user interface of mail and deploy. Um, mm -hmm. Due to time constra constraints, I won't be able to explain everything. But basically, the first thing that you need to do before doing reporting with mail and deploy is connecting mail and deploy to your data sources. And data sources can, can be uh, SQL Server databases, Oracle databases, a ClickSense on premise, your ClickSense, your ClickView on premise installation. And since we're talking about moving into the cloud and recent developments, you can also pick ClickSense software as a service app, which is a fancy word for a click dashboard hosted in the cloud. Wow. And if I choose this type of data source, I can paste my API key that helps me to connect to my, to my uh, click instance. Then I need to copy the URL of my tenant here. So that is just my, in, in our case, my personal or our company internal uh, click account. And by clicking refresh here, I get a list of all the dashboards that I have uh, in that cloud environment. Wow. So for instance, the BP demo app that you can see here, I can simply select this here in mail and deploy and confirm my selection. Oh, sorry, I forgot to enter a name, so I have to give it a name. Let's call it demo app. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I'm going to initialize the data source. So initializing the data source is nothing more than mail and deploy connecting to the click cloud and gathering some meta information. So which visualizations do you have in your app? Uh, um, which fields and variables, which dimensions do you have in your app? so that you can start designing reports on top of that. Now, switching to reports here, um, that, that is where I can now make use of those data sources. In our case, I only have added one to actually design a report. And the report types that we support are Word, PowerPoint, Excel uh, reports, XML, HTML, and CSV. And of course, we also support PDF reports and PDF reports are simply Word, Excel, or PowerPoint, or HTML reports that are being converted by mail and deploy, or are converted by mail and deploy to a PDF file at the end of the, of the report creation process. 
So let me show you a very quick um, demo with, with a Microsoft Word report. I'm just going to name this report uh, demo report. Going to confirm it. We're going to forget about all the other settings that we, that we saw here because they are not really used. And I can now enter the design mode of the report. And the design mode is basically allows you to add templates to the report. And templates are always, in the case of a Microsoft Word report, a template is a just a regular Microsoft Word file that you can import uh, or, or create from scratch. So we can edit the template in a standard Microsoft Word interface here. So we can have a, a heading, a title. This is my demo report, some text here, whatever, hello world. I'm not too creative, as you can see. <laughs> um, and you can make use of all the features that Microsoft Word has. You can have, um, you can have, uh, uh, you know, title pages. You can have images. You can headers, footers, um, anything you like. And we can now use Mail and Deploy by going to the what we call the data source browser here. And the data source browser is ba basically gives you um, a structure that shows you what my Click app contains. So for instance, we do have a pivot table here, example pivot, and a pie chart, revenue by product uh, group. And remember, when I switch back to the app here, this is the example pivot table here, and this is revenue by product group. This is the pie chart, da chart down here. So mail and deploy basically shows you, OK, which elements or visualizations does my dashboard contain? And I can now simply right click this pie chart, for instance, mm -hmm. click new chart element, drag and drop it into my template where I will get a placeholder like this one. Then I can adjust the placeholder, move it up or down, whatever, you know, locate it where you want in your, in your report. <clears throat> and let's, as a second um, option, choose the pivot table. And let's add the pivot table as a table element. And let me just scroll down here a bit. Um, and then drag and drop the pivot table into our report as well. And without making it too complicated, there are lots of options that you have for, you know, deciding how will your pivot table look like, you know, which fonts to use, which colors, which borders, padding. Um, do you want dimensions to have, be indented and that kind of stuff? So too many options to show here. Um, but lots of things you can customize in, in Mail and Deploy. Yeah, and once I have uh, finished here, I can press a preview button. And that preview will simply connect to my Click app in the, in the cloud um, and will um, now read data, extract visualizations. Um, it just it will take a few, a few seconds to do that. It's already mm -hmm. finished. Wow. And as you can see, we now have a Word file that contains the, the pie chart that we already had, plus the pivot table. And without a lot of effort that I had to put into it, I get a nicely looking pivot table that has, um, I mean, just, just in his example, uh, as an example here, you can see that the pivot table here has colored percentages based on, you know, some kind of threshold. Like if, if the number is greater than 25, make it green, otherwise make it red or, or something like that. And automatically mail and deploy, oh, sorry, um, uses the same formatting here in, in uh, your report. And of course, there's lots of options. For instance, you could say, um, well, I want the report to only contain, contain data for Europe. So what I just did here interactively from within click, selecting the region Europe. I can also do that in mail and deploy. So I can say, okay, um, go to my, go to the report settings here, add a new filter. So we can filter a particular field in our click uh, environment. We're going to filter the field region and we're going to filter it to Europe. There's also lots of options to 
dynamically filter like things like uh, current year, previous year, previous month, that kind of stuff, of course. And when we now create the report, you can see that it says filtering field here. So it does nothing. Right. Actually, it does the same things like I do here interactively. It filters to, re to region to Europe. The dashboard automatically updates and our um, report now, as you can see here, only contains data for Europe now in our pivot table and also in our um, in our chart up here. Right. Now, once you've created such a uh, or designed such a report, there are lots of options in Made and Deploy to to get that report to your uh, actual report recipients. Um, uh, again, way too many options to show them all, but uh, just to give you a, a very quick overview, um, we have distribution methods like um, you can print, actually you can print reports directly to a physical printer. Uh, you can um, save reports on a file system, on a network share. You can upload reports to an AWS S3 bucket. You can upload it to an FTP or S uh, SFTP server. You can upload reports um, to a SharePoint instance uh, or into a Microsoft Teams channel. Uh, you can send it by email. And, and all of that is really, really dynamic. So you can have dynamically named uh, file paths uh, dynamically uh, dynamic um, email addresses that are automatically being applied by mail and deploy um, so mail and deploy provides everything you need for a fully automated reporting experience without having to fiddle around too long with with just another tool you need to learn that's that was uh, the design goal that we that we had in mind when we um, when we uh, designed version three of, of mail and deploy so I hope that was a, 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 a tight enough uh, a demo and it wasn't too fast. Um, so. Um, I, I think definitely the folks enjoyed this uh, demo session and uh, thanks for this bent. Uh, I will like now take off your screen. Uh, okay. Uh, we had a lot of questions, but uh, I'll be obviously be selective about the questions uh, since there are many and a few uh, I can see you've already answered. So there is something around a project which Bakari asked, which was uh, very interesting. As a BI specialist, <laughs> when do you regard a project as complete? Because that's very interesting, right? Um, so I could give two answers here. The first answer yeah. is never. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think BI, uh, BI projects are, are always um, living projects in the sense that and, and we, we, uh, we actually we actually live that every day. So when we sell mail and deploy to a new customer, um, that customer very often has in mind some very specific reports. Oh yeah, we need mm -hmm. mail and deploy because we want to do this report and this report and another report. Right. But very soon, once the, those reports are in place, um, you know, this feedback comes into play because other people within their company suddenly say, oh, hey, you can do reporting now. Oh, we, we have a new project here. Right. So it, um, you know, once you start, you can't stop. Um, the more serious answer probably is um, you. Sh as I said before, when you when you start with BI, or when you add something to your existing BI, always talk about the business case. What is my goal? What is my target? And then I would say your project is complete if the people using the dashboard that you're creating or that people receiving the reports that you designed in mail and deploy no longer complain and they give thumbs up and say that's exactly what we wanted that's that's what i can say yeah definitely i agree because it can be never ending in terms of bringing in the data and uh, working around it in different ways and putting it in different charts but uh, uh, understand the maybe the client requirement very well if i'm right in uh, yes if, uh, you know you guys are actually putting those uh, text to what they have mentioned and i think that that uh, that's when you can actually say you're closer to completing but i'm sure there are projects which are ongoing and uh, ben uh, tell us more about it in terms of uh, is there are there projects where uh, the clients actually uh, 
you know obviously when you put a report it's almost 80 percent complete but then there's more requirement that comes in does that happen very often or it's almost always almost always because uh, they kind of so customers are used to click they find it great what can do with click then they start with mail and deploy having an idea like oh okay let's just export this pivot table to excel because you know the financial guy wants to have that but then a financial guy says, oh, it would be great if I had another people table in the same report. And True. oh, can you give me some KPIs as well? And that's uh, where, um, you know, things are, yeah. Exactly. Um, now, I, now, taking I off. Why, <laughs> now I know why you say that uh, a project is never complete. You can never say it's complete because there is always something more to play around with and there are always more requirements. But definitely exactly. to... Uh, 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 put a conclusion if the client is happy then you can actually say that it's complete yes. okay let's quickly uh, obviously take another quick question from the audience uh, from abhishek how much uh, time one need to invest to learn quick view uh, from basics to make a great reports so your overview makes me think one can learn it quickly kindly and like so the demo app that i just showed you plus uh, plus the report in mail and deploy i mean the report in mail and deploy i created from scratch, you know, I, I had an existing click app, obviously, but it was a fresh mail and deploy installation. I connected the data source, I created the report, and it took me five minutes to get to get to a decent looking report, right? The click app itself, the one that I showed you right, right here, that was just a matter of, uh, so <laughs> the thing that took most of the time was creating an Excel file that contains some okay. fake data that I can use in my dashboard. Mm -hmm creating the dashboard was a matter of 10 minutes at maximum and you don't need to know you don't need to have any any special tech skills to do that so um I, i'm pretty sure if you google um click view or i would advise to go for click sense nowadays click sense tutorial you will be up and running within 10 minutes yeah Amazing. That's a nice question, Abhishek. Uh, a great answer. Okay, uh, Ben, this was fantastic, a great session. But uh, obviously, before you leave, I want to know more about Mail and Deploy in terms of what are the future plans? How are you going to the version 4? Uh, well, future plans are obviously um, gathering feedback from customers. So version 3 has shipped or has started to ship, like, um, I think in January or March. So, um, we're, and I'm, to be honest, I'm, when I do the, the lead development, one of the most important things for me is to be not kind of a hidden lead developer. I actually engage with customers a lot. So I, I, I do a lot of projects myself. Um, I, I talk to customers a lot simply because I think that in, our, in order to understand what the requirements of tomorrow are, I need to talk to the customers because they are using our tool. I'm just, you know, the one typing software code in and and guy telling others what they what they uh, how they should code um so definitely moving into the cloud um probably going into mobile so that you can de maybe design reports on your ipad uh especially wow. for quick self-service stuff um and um more distribution methods we we have amazon aws cloud now but you may want to upload your reports to google for instance or to your to your google documents uh you may want to upload it to um well uh, maybe maybe even um uh, technologies that we don't even know of yet and and so that's what we're focusing on for for the near future yeah okay that's that's fair enough and uh, looking forward to see how mail and deploy kind of moves ahead and does wonders. Uh, so uh, looking forward to it. Yes, definitely. Okay. Uh, it's time we announce our winners. There have been, uh, it's time to break the suspense and uh, do the, you know, the, the raffle and uh, announce the winner who wins the hashtag 365 data science annual subscription. So there are 22 entries, guys. Uh, all the best to everyone, and thanks for uh, getting involved. Uh, let's go for it. So this is how it is, automated, very fancy <laughs> stuff. Let's see who the winner is. And the winner for the annual subscription of has 360 per data science is Abhishek oh. Srivastav. That's, That's a perfect for, fit, right? <laughs> oh, yes, definitely. Because you wanted to, this is just meant for you. You wanted to uh, 
obviously uh, uh, learn a lot around uh, bi and i'm sure 365 data science has uh, many courses out there so what you can do is definitely i'll share a code with you where you can actually uh, get an annual subscription and uh, obviously you can learn a lot there so a great congrats uh, <laughs> congratulations yes definitely okay moving on uh bent uh for those who wanted to who want to reach out to you or who want to reach out to mail and deploy what is the best uh which is the best place to reach out uh, best place is probably to go to uh, www.mail-and-deploy.com um, yeah. where you can find example reports, uh, use cases or, or um, reference cases. You can get in touch with us. Uh, we are providing live demos. Um, if you if you want to know more about the project, we provide demo installations. Um, everything um, you need, you will find there. And of course, you can get in touch with us um, mm. through the website. OK, that's amazing. Thanks for this. Uh went and I've shared the website with the uh, folks in the chat section so you can have a look at it. Uh, thanks to our amazing audience for asking such amazing questions. Uh, ben, this was uh, amazing. Me too. Can't wait. Yes, can't wait to have a 2.0 version where we uh, discuss more developments that happen in the mail and deploy. And we'll be I'd love to do uh, that. Yeah, we'll love to have you back on the show because I'm sure the audience kind of learned a lot around the BI, the intelligence tool, the reporting, and how it's uh, automated. Your demo was uh, definitely one thing, how it showed uh, how things could be, you know, how reports could be easily created. It's just the back end work, which data takes a lot of time. But uh, when it comes to reporting, it can be very easy with click. And Mail and Deploy is definitely a great product, the way you've designed it so well. So thanks again, Bent. It was thanks fantastic a lot. talking to you. It was great. And, to yeah was great and um, I really enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Take care. Yep. Have a nice week Thank ahead. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Cheers. Bye-bye.